The New York State Pavilion was originally built as a spectacular public structure at the 1964 World's Fair in Flushing Meadows Corona Park. Designed by architect Philip Johnson as an icon for the world to see, the pavilion served as a gathering space, a concert venue, and even a roller skating rink before it slipped into the realm of the forgotten. As the pavilion has started to emerge over the past decade, creative collaborative efforts and renewed public interest have helped restore the integrity of this Queen's icon. The attraction here was the building. It wasn't a ride, it wasn't this or that. The building grabbed your attention in some way, shape or form. I don't know how many hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people passed through this location. The pavilion first ran into trouble during the fiscal crises of New York City back in the 70s. So it's very reflective of the history of New York City. It survived, it didn't recover yet, but it has survived. I feel it's sort of crossed over into the realm of iconic as a symbol of Queens because everyone knows when they see the towers, it means Queens, you know? We feel that once we painted it, it was easy to envision it repurposed. Even something as simple as a coat of paint can really change your perception of what something could be. The Tent of Tomorrow had this huge terrazzo map on the floor of New York State. It was a Texaco State map. There were these squares, and within those squares, there were little pieces of material that laid out all of New York State with all these different towns. That all got worn out, and then a couple of years ago, the Parks Department worked with UPenn to essentially preserve what was left of that. I hounded Philip Johnson's secretary for three years before he died to get to talk to him about it. I was, you know, what's it like to have your own ruin? He used the word neat. It's neat, but it's not much of ruin because there's no ivy growing up the columns. So I then went out and planted ivy on the columns, which kind of grew up to about 50 feet on about three or four of the columns. On April 12, 2014, to celebrate the 50th anniversary of the first day of the 1964 World's Fair, we had our own event right here at the Tent of Tomorrow. We invited the public to come in and get a tour of the tent. We had thousands of people showed up. I've been in the Parks Department 35 years. I think it was my favorite day ever in the Parks Department. And it showed that we might be this large regional park, but we're still this community and that that's really important to people and we want to preserve that feeling for them. We partnered with the National Trust for Historic Preservation and we worked with them to build out this ideas competition and I think just inviting people to imagine a future for it helped to kind of shape people a bit. It's pretty spectacular but it doesn't have the same feel because it's it's not abandoned really it's you know they've painted it. So the pavilion before could evoke these feelings of what was our past and what could be our future. You could see footprints, you could see where the doors opened and would scratch the floor. You could see all these things, you could feel that past. Personally, I don't know that you even necessarily need to do all that much to make it an open space again. Just keeping it as it is, making some structural upgrades and letting people get inside it would be thrilling. It's just so iconic and so important that I think we'll think, how could this ever have been close to the public? As these creative efforts continue to highlight the importance of the pavilion, government agencies have been stepping up to allocate funds to begin the restoration process. And even as the future of its structure is still being determined, we should celebrate these ongoing commitments to activating the pavilion and to the future of Flushing Meadows Corona Park. <laughs>